Dear learners, in the previous lectures you understood about the basic and key terms regarding forensic serology. Apart from this, you have learnt about the nature, composition and functions of blood components. Moving forward, now in this lecture, you will learn different procedures used for the collection and packaging of blood evidences along with the precautions to be taken. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to understand Firstly, different sources of blood evidence on the crime scene. Second, procedures, precautions and packaging methods for collection of blood evidences. Before handling any blood evidence, its location and physical state, for example, fresh, must be documented by some combination of notes, diagrams, videotapes, and photographs. Other details may be pertinent to record as well, such as the temperature, humidity, or existence of multiple severe wounds but little blood. The latter condition suggests that the person was killed somewhere else or that an attempt was made to clean the victim and or scene. In this lecture, we will study the collection of blood from different sources for example. 1. Blood samples from a known source. 2. Fresh or dried blood on a person. 3. Fresh blood on surfaces or in snow or water. 4. Fresh or dried blood stains on garments and objects. Blood is collected in the vacutainers at the time of post-mortem examination. Different vacutainers are used to isolate plasma and serum from the blood to perform a wide variety of tests. The vacutainers have a colored rubber stopper or cap at one end which is a kind of code for different types of sampling. Each vacutainer contains one type of anticoagulant. We recognize the type of anticoagulant present with the help of color coding, for example, red cap vacutainers are the plain vials having no anticoagulant. Purple top vacutainers contain ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, ETA as an anticoagulant. Yellow cap vacutainers contain acid citrate dextrose anticoagulant. Gray cap vacutainers contain potassium oxalate or sodium fluoride. Dark green top vacutainers contain sodium heparin. On centrifugation of blood collected in plain vials, we will get the layer of serum above the blood clot. On the other hand, the centrifugation of blood collected in any of the anticoagulant vials will give plasma. Now, identify each tube with the date, time, collector's name, case number, subject's name, location at which drawn and evidence number. Precautions after collecting blood samples are do not freeze blood samples. Do not use either dry ice or liquid nitrogen. Refrigerate them and use cold packs to pack them for shipment to the laboratory. The second condition or source will be the collection of fresh or dried blood on a person. The procedure can be understood as if there is fresh blood. Absorb it on a clean cotton cloth or swab. If the blood is clotting or has dried, use distilled water to moisten a cotton cloth or swab and then absorb the blood with the moist surface. Leave a portion of the cloth or swab unstained as a control or blank sample. Regarding dried blood, four sampling methods are used. First, cutting. This method is mainly used for stain on the objects that are difficult to submit to the lab as a whole. So, the stained portion is cut. The cut portion should also include unstained areas around the blood stain. Second, swabbing method. In this the stain is transferred to a swab which has been moistened with sterile water or saline. Third, scraping. In this, a sharp instrument is used to scrape the stain from a surface and transfer onto clean sterile paper. Fourth, elution. In this, the personnel uses a small amount of saline or distilled water to dissolve the dried stain. Precautions are Precautions can be summarized as 
let the cloth or swab air dry naturally. Do not place it in direct sunlight or next to a heat source. And do not use a hair dryer on it. These actions could cause the evidence to begin decomposing, thus reducing or eliminating its evidentiary value. For packaging Wrap the evidence in clean, dry paper or place it in an envelope with sealed corners. Plastic containers should not be used. The third potential source of blood can be fresh blood in snow or water. The procedure for collecting fresh blood from most surfaces is the same as that described earlier for blood on a person. However, when blood is in a filled bathtub or some other body of water or, when it is on snow, a different approach is required. For blood in water, draw the sample from the thickest concentrations of blood whenever possible. When gathering blood from snow, eliminate as much snow as possible from the sample. Freeze it in a clean, airtight container and submit the sample to the laboratory as soon as possible. In the end, let's understand the concept of collection of fresh or dried blood stains on garments and objects. The general procedure to be followed is, you should allow fresh blood stains on garments to air dry naturally, then fold the clothing with the crusts intact. Do not fold clothing in a way that creases blood stains as the creases may cause them to become dislodged. As you fold the clothing, Place clean paper between each layer. Usually, blood stained garments are found at the crime scene or retrieved from the hospital's emergency room. Fresh blood stains on a small movable item, such as a weapon, lamp, or door, should also be allowed to air dry naturally. The item is then submitted to the laboratory for processing. For packaging, one should pack the item in clean paper in such a way that the paper does not rub against the blood stains, as rubbing could alter or eradicate the blood stain pattern. When blood stains are on a large movable object, they can be collected, if fresh, by using the cotton cloth or swab technique or by cutting a large sample from a dried stain. For packing Pack the item in clean paper in such a way that the paper does not rub against the blood stains. As rubbing could alter or eradicate the blood stain pattern. When blood stains are on a large movable object, they can be collected. If fresh, by using the cotton cloth or swab technique. Or by cutting a large sample from a dried stain. At the end of this video, now all of you have understood, first, the procedures used for the collection of blood evidences from different sources, second, the role of precautions and packaging methods after the collection of blood evidences.